Corkin Studio operates international development projects which aim to improve the lives of communities globally through an exchange of culture, knowledge and skills. Teams of international volunteers work side by side with local people in countries worldwide to achieve this goal. Our ethos is to design through collaboration, learn through building and experience through immersion. As a group of architects ourselves, we give our volunteers the chance to have their own creative input into what we're building. To see finished is the gables because I've been working on them for so long. They've become my babies, that's what Harry calls them. Uh, we're discussing the glazing elements in the gable end um, of the building and how to work around the bracing that has to be there from a structure engineer. I helped design them and then got put onto the team that put up the stud work and then we've put the noggins in and we've put the windows in and we've measured every piece of cladding and to finally see that going in, it will seal the building and it will give it the four walls that kind of make it feel like a proper structure. When you go in that space, it feels different than if you go into like the concrete bricked, really boring, uh, systematic, you know, same as every other building in, around. That building has an energy. We received uh, some villages from Kite, so we showed them the new building. Like they just sat there and like, wow, and everything, the, the structure, how the building is being done. I know that the village's aspirations involve renting it out and um, leasing it to the government maybe for conventions and that sort of thing, having children's organisations come in and to have a building that's eye-catching and really sets it apart, gives the village kind of a stamp, like if you want to come to Savandro Jo, this is the village hall and it will be different from every other village hall that you've ever been in. I wanted to be involved in something first-hand, like a first-hand impact on a community. I looked a little bit into humanitarian architecture, but it's a completely different thing to just discuss the topic in a conversation and to actually be somewhere and see the, the impact that you're making. Uh, so we're measuring the cross bracing that's going to go diagonally joint from the bottom of the roof truss down to where this height, head height long beam is. I decided to volunteer with Corkin because I had been uh, working for a year and really wanted to get some hands-on experience in actually building something and making a difference. In terms of construction ability, the, f the villagers are way, way ahead of us. They've got way more experience. We're all quite young. They've all built their own homes. We were really happy for them to come because we want to give them what we know, help them out. So when they go back, probably they can just take our story with them to their country. We feel like, oh, you're a teacher now. Like, we feel good as well. We, we know things like a lot and lot. So the more we teach, the more we learn. James Bond is just an absolute sweetheart and he's been incredibly helpful and I feel like I've actually learned quite a lot from him. For example, there was one, one task where we completely messed up a nail in the door. He came over and just showed, showed us how to kind of get it out and I've used that since multiple times and everyone's like, how do you know that? James, James told me how to do that. I mean, tool induction, I'd never used a circular saw before I came here and now I can use it and I use it confidently. Just the small things like making sure your reinforcement bar is 75 mil in from the edge of every piece of concrete. It's something that you learn at university and you learn it very early and then you forget it because you don't use it. But to see it happen and remind yourself that it is important that it's like that is really valuable. <laughs> Being able to learn more about the culture here is kind of the most rewarding thing from it. And then for them to be willing to let me be a part of the Mecca at the uh, resorts is just also extremely like humbling. Like knowing that they want you to perform it with them and like because they feel like you're a part of the community and the part of the village and that really just makes you feel even more like connected with everyone. So we are at the moment next to the sea and by the side of the road. 
and we're going to be night fishing with a bunch of the local guys and some of the women as well. Uh, so it took us maybe half an hour to walk down here and we'll be here for maybe an hour and a half trying to catch some fish. We'll go and get some fish in the sea. Spear to kill the fish for us to have some dinner with the fish. <laughs> My name is uh, Salome Teresia Kamkor. I'm from Naweni village and I'm teaching at uh, Naweni kindergarten. I really enjoy staying with the girls, even though they're working hard in the field, in the building of the classroom, they came home, they still come help, have the, that body, that heart to help me in the kitchen. And I just miss our talk around our cup of tea. <laughs> yeah, we're talking every day now. They're promising me they'll come back, they shall come back. So, looking forward to seeing them again. Makalisi is my Fijian mum, and I wouldn't want anybody else. <laughs> she's bubbly, she's hilarious, she's cheeky, she's very cheeky, but also she's really warm and she's welcomed us into her home so well. I keep on sending them photos inside the classroom. It's a nice experience making new friends for me. I had a daughter. She's been away from home and like staying with the girls. They were really, they feel that gap. <laughs> so.